Hey everyone, Happy New Year 2015. I'm making my first video of the year. I plan on making a lot more videos this year. Um, I actually dedicate this video to Anthony Esposito, who's been chronicling his um, straight razor shaves throughout 2014. Me and Anthony started right around the same time using a straight razor, and uh, whereas I kind of integrated DEs, SEs, and the straight razor. Anthony really just went and ran with the ball with uh, with his straight razors and has done so much to promote um, the use of straight razors that I figured, you know, this video, first first shave of the year, this one goes out to you, Anthony, uh, the stall AKA, aka the stallion. So this one's for you. Uh, today, my gear of choice is going to be the Dovo, the Dovo La Forme. It is a 6 8 shoulderless, so it has no stabilizers. It's very similar to the Bismarck. That is my, my as Anthony calls it, this is my shaver. You know, when you live in Boston, when you live in uh, Massachusetts and you live closer to Boston, that this is called your shaver. This isn't a shaver, it's a shaver. So, kind of like it's a cat. And uh, my soap, I ended the year with uh, pretty much one of my favorite soaps, Chocolate Bourbon by Synergy. And I'm going to start my year off with one of my favorite soaps. I didn't mention it in my Seven Deadly Sins, but still one of my favorite brands. Barrister and Man Vetiver Santal. Vegan formulation. Uh, vetiver with a little citrus kick. I'm also today going to be talking about um, a new brush. I just got a new brush. Uh, it came yesterday, just in the nick of time. I got it. It is. Uh, it's a Bull Goose exclusive, and Phil got it out to me super, super quick. And um, Bull Goose is great. I don't deal with him as often as I probably should. He's a really great guy, Phil. I've, he's never let me down ever. He's just. Uh, he's another guy that's a really great guy in, in the community that doesn't really get talked a lot about. Uh, but I got a Lord Randall. But this one goes out a little bit to to, to Busta because. He did a video on the premium silver tip Lord Randall. I watched it last night. I thought it was a great video, and I agree with him 100% that you don't know premium silver tip until you actually get something that's top quality, like like a like a Thater or a top of the line like uh, Morris von Drain, something like that. Silver tip, you don't really know how good it is. Now, what makes my video a little bit different on the Lord Randall is this is the first video I've ever seen or I'm making, I should say, that is using a mixed Lord Randall, meaning it has horsehair and badger. It's made by Vlong or Vilong out of Spain who are known for their horsehair brushes. So, that being said, I'm already getting too long-winded. Let's get down to this shave. Let's get the party started here. Okay, so this right here, by the way, um, Barrister and Man says that their shaves like, or their soaps like a lot of water. I don't find that to be true, but this is a new brush, so I'm gonna give it one gravity shake. Um, this is the brush in question. This is the Lord Randall, exclusive Bull Goose Vilong, um, mixed, mixed hair brush. So I'm gonna do about a 60 second loading. I can already tell, number one, this soap is exploding inside of this uh, inside of this jar number one number two the backbone is amazing on this um, partially probably because it's new partially because it's just it's very dense it's a very very dense knot um, that said I probably should have done two uh, two shakes because I think I have a little bit too much water in this mix um, that said we'll work it out no biggie no big deal not the end of the world um, so that was about 60 seconds, and I actually have a lather built in the tub. Um, it's a little bit bubbly for me. I'm going to face lather today, so this will work itself out, and it's not going to wet my face as much. Okay, so as you can see, I have a pretty wet brush going on here right now that has a very adequate amount of lather in it, and the actual tub has a lot of lather in it as well. So I might actually use this as a quasi bowl lather too. So that's it, let me wait, wet my face and get down to it. And I'll show you a little bit of tips along the way. Using as hot of water as I can. Horsehair brushes traditionally stink horribly. I'll be the first to say that. And anyone that's used horse knows what I'm talking about. 
makes badger and uh, boar look like nothing. Knock you out the stuff. Um, but I can tell you this, the mix makes it a little bit better having that badger in the mix. So first things first, when you have a handlebar mustache that, you know, I could basically stretch all the way out to here. First things first, get that damn mustache out of your way or else you're going to cut it off, okay? So let's start, let's start face lathering here. See what we can do. I'm going to go a little bit slow just because this is a pretty wet brush. Might work out well though. Like William uh, from Barrister Man says, the soaps perform best when uh, when hydrated very, very well. You could already see I have an amazing lather going on here. It's uh, it's ex what I use the term explosive lather going on. Uh, getting a little bit of that horse funk. It's a good thing it's a vetiver. <laughs> It's a good thing I'm not uh, using a rose scented soap or anything like that. And we definitely conflict with that. Definitely not adding any more water. It's definitely starting to thicken up a decent amount. I'm gonna take a little bit more out of uh out of this uh tub and paint it on. Got lather falling all over the place here. Or as Anthony calls it, it got some lather falling all over the place. Hope I'm getting that New England uh, accent right. Even though I'm 50% uh, of my time I'm, I'm in the Northeast up in England, New England I should say, um, I still don't have, I still have the New York accent from uh, living in New York. This this lather is awesome. awesome. I mean, it's falling all over the place, but it's, uh, I mean, uh, let me get this in the camera. Look at this. This is the first use and it's like, it's all over the place. It's uh, it, this, it's gonna be a good brush once this is broken in. It's just I need to tame it. A little, need to tame the need to tame this uh, the horse a little bit. So let me rinse my hands off. Now, when you have the facial hair like I have, you have to do a couple things to protect it. Number one, always pull the mustache away in an upward motion. Pull it away from where you don't want to shave, so you have a you have a reference mark. I hope you can hear me over the water. So I always do that first on both sides. Okay, clean that mustache off a little bit. Just so it doesn't go in my mouth and I don't get too much soap in my mouth. Next thing I'll do, like uh, Geo Fat Boy likes to call it, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear the runways because I got some pretty long uh, chops here. Okay. That said, let me put the brush down. Uh, clean up a little bit of this lather because I really did make a mess. I definitely used a little bit too much water. But my lather's stable. Everything's looking good. Time to break out the razor and let's get to work. I would sit down here on a microfiber cloth to protect it. I always heat my blade. I always will heat my blade first in hot water. Hot steel always cuts better. I'll then dry it partially to get the oils off of the shank from when I oiled it before I when I last put it away. I always oil it. So the monkey tail and the shank actually get wiped down and I always leave a little bit of water on the blade to help with the uh, with the actual shave itself. Next last, next and last thing I do before I start the shave is I move this mustache away, kind of in the middle and pinch it in the middle. Um, if you have an alum block, I'm not going to go through all that right now, it actually helps to put a little alum on your fingers and rub it together and then put your fingers there, it'll help keep it in place. That's a barber's trick actually to help keep the hair standing upright and out of the way. So let's get this going. Okay, 50% of my neck is done. With my hair growth, the way it goes on my neck, I uh, have to do this a little bit uniquely, the way I actually do it. I only really do two passes, maybe two and a half, if you want to consider it that on my neck. If you notice, I'm turning my head a little bit, and that's 
to stretch the skin on my neck a little bit. If you could hear the hair actually being cut. I'm not sure if that's picking that up or not. It helps to keep the skin taut, always. Okay, I'm a switching hand maniac here today. Okay, here's the deal. Make sure the hair is out of the way. This is very important for this part, okay? Number one, pull this aside a little bit. It's a little bit more assurance that you're not going to cut your, your mustache off, okay? Now, stretch the skin straight down. Then I angle it off at the very end and roll down the neck, keeping a good angle. Rinse a lot. Okay, we're gonna go to the opposite side. Clear that away, keep it away from the mustache. Now, if you don't have a mustache, it's of little concern what I'm actually doing right there. It's just because I have the mustache and don't wanna cut it off that I do that. Now this is a little bit difficult of a move because I can't really see very well what I'm doing. So I just use my my uh, my sideburn as a, a marker to start my blade. But I really actually can't see because the razor is like directly in front of my eye. And again, angle it off at the very end. You'll notice I puffed my cheeks a drop there as well, and that's only just to increase, again, surface tension. Okay, let's finish off the chin, and that'll be my with the grain pass. This I actually hold my mustache for. Now, don't think I'm stupid puffing my chin out and doing some weird stuff. Because, you know, like I said, be keeping your skin taut is very important, so you'll use my tongue to push forward, you know, my, my lip area, and I'll kind of like stretch my jaw a little bit in order to keep the chin as, as straight as possible. I'm probably cutting this all out of the video. That was my first pass, so I'm going to wet my face minimally. I'm going to wipe my blade down, set it down safely on the spine, laying down a little bit backwards, kind of slant it backwards in order for me not to hurt the edge of the blade or the cutting edge of the blade. So let me rinse off only a little bit of water because it's a very wet lather to begin with. Okay, let me dry my hands. You never want to get water on the scales of your blade if you could avoid it. Just uh, not because of slipperiness, that's part of the reason, but also because you just don't want to damage your scale in any way. So, okay, the lather looks like it's actually thickened up a bit. I'm um, gonna just clean it up a drop. And let's apply to face once again. Gotta say, first use, <laughs> this Lord Randall is actually uh, feeling, it smells like hell, but it's uh, it's performing like I've been using it forever. It's performing excellently. And it's got massive amounts of backbone. Massive amounts. It's a great veteran scent. 
I only usually pick up a very little bit of that, of that citrus note that William uh, blended in in order to, to sharpen or brighten up that vetiver scent. Because vetiver on its own is very, very earthy. Very, it smells a lot like dirt is the best way to, is that I can describe vetiver. Okay, once again, clear the runways. At this point, I'm just going to start putting it back onto the brush a little bit. Rinse my hands a little bit. Clear those pathways I told you about. So I don't cut off my, my signature handlebar mustache. Get it all over my nose. Make a mess of myself. Perfect way to start off the new year. Pretty much how I ended my year last year. A mess. Okay. Let's get back to it. Dry my hands off. Okay, first things first, like I said. Clear away, even though I, I moved a lot of it away with my finger. Make sure the hair is out of the way. Or at least you give yourself a little bit of working room. Okay, we're just going to do that side first really quick. Okay, now we're going to do, this is weird, I jump around a lot when I use a straight. Now, we're going to hold the hair out of the way. And we're going to, well actually, let's do this first. Let's make that little pathway right there. Now, we're actually going to go, this is my across the grain pass. And I puff my cheek out a little bit for skin tension. Again, like I said earlier, if you have alum, Rub it on your fingers, it'll actually help with um, grip, keeping your, keeping, able to keep that skin taut. Okay, so that's one cheek down. Okay, let's get to the other side doing my cross the green. Clear that path. And bring it in towards that stash. Get the stash out of the way. And that centerpiece, another with the green pass. I obviously reopened a little, uh, a little weeper right there. This blade's coming at its point where it needs to be, uh, it needs to see a, a stone if I'm not mistaken. It's starting to get a little bit duller than I'd like it to be, but. Not bad still, still not too bad. Like I said, I do two passes on on my neck area. So this is my second pass. Notice how I'm going at a 45 degree angle. Because my hair runs across the, um, I'm sorry, against the green in this direction. So the best I could do is 45 degree cut. Now, this part of my chin, 
actually runs a little bit more normal. Sweeper's pissing me off. Um, this actually is north-south or south-north for against the grain. And also for this side of my neck. I actually go upwards, south to north. I always roll it over my chin, or over my jawline, sorry. Okay, and that concludes my across the grain cast with a straight razor with a really funky hair growth pattern. Okay, let me let me rinse off. Again, very very little water. Okay, I'll rinse my hands. Okay, again, I'm going to apply mostly painting this time my face. Like I told you, I do two passes on my neck, sort of. I actually do the upper part of my neck, right here. I don't do my full neck, I just do the very, very upper part. I don't use the thickest of, uh, of coatings on my final against the pass, against the grain pass. And I find that it works very well. So while I'm painting this on, preparation is a good thing. Um, what did everyone do last night for New Year's? Anyone go out, do anything exciting, get engaged? I was watching uh, Times Square in New York and some, some soldier, some uh, serviceman, a Marine, based on his uh, uniform, proposed. Thought that was really nice and I'm really impromptu. Um, engagement, watch that. I actually... Uh, watched um, a couple hours earlier. I watched uh, London. I saw uh, Russia's New Year's. Um, what else I see? Germany's. I saw a couple. I saw the, a really impressive one was China's. Oh my god. That was like, let me tell you, well they invented fireworks so they know what they're doing. That's all I could say. Okay, so my final pass against the grain Okay, this is tricky. Now, Lynn Abrams might, might hit me for doing this. I bend back the scale pretty far here, and I tilt my head back pretty hard. Find the right angle, 45 degrees down. Can you hear that? That is BBS smooth. Okay, now against the grain on the face. This is a little bit trickier for me always because once again the mustache. Clean that up just to keep it neat. Now I always use the same hand on the same side. Skin stretching is important against the grain. I hope I get this into the video shot okay. Good thing is with against the grain doing it this way, I can actually see the mustache. I can see where it is. Doing this part, actually believe it or not against the grain goes like this. And off to the other side I go. 
same deal, clear a path. Use the same hand, get that mustache out of the way. Actually clear it off a little bit. Now, if you call this a reverse grip, I'm going to stretch the, the skin. Using that sideburn as a guideline. There's a lot of glide there still left, so I'm able to, to still grab it, which is good. Didn't cut any of that off, straighten this out a little bit based on a couple of the hairs I see right here. That being that I believe was that way, I know it came from my sideburn. And then finally, we're going to do my chin and that'll be it for the day for my shave keep that blade nice and warm dry it off partially make sure my hands are dry now this is this is actually probably the trickiest of all of the shave is my chin for me because it is a, north, a south to north pass and it's just not easy. I'm actually going to apply a drop more lather there, get a little bit more slickness. This Lord Randall is just like producing tons of lather, it's everywhere. Can't believe it's doing this much on its first, uh, on its maiden voyage, so to speak. It's very rare a brush performs like that. Use very small strokes on the chin area. Talking definitely is not going to help. I get the most resistance on my chin. To me, it's not worth messing anything up, so I'm just going to do 45 degree cuts here. Okay, let me rinse off. Using cold water, by the way, I'm using cold water to rinse off, same as I will with the D or any other razor to help close down my pores, anything I uh, might have reopened and nicked, any type of uh, residual type of stuff like that. Cold water is always my first line of defense. Keeping that mustache still out of the way. Still keeping it out of the way. And then we go, I dry my hands off a little bit, just a little bit, and I grab my trusty Razor Rock Alum. Usually they say wet the alum block first, then apply it to your, to your face or whatever area. I apply it to my whole face for feedback, and I do have a weeper right there and uh, one right there. I actually did get myself twice. I reopened something or just overshaved or the blade just needs to be done. Shaved, I think that blade, if I'm remembering my uh, journal, well, I think I have over about, about 40 or so shaves on it right now. And I think it really might be time for it to see a stone. This was a very close shave, even though I did reopen that weeper. This is a constant weeper I seem to reopen on a regular basis. You know that happened, that was actually a pretty darn comfortable shave.
no complaints. That <laughs> I can't believe how well that Lord Randall just performed. Fifty dollars didn't cost that much. Mixed horse and badger, just ridiculously tight of a shave of, of a brush. It just exploded that lather. I mean, the backbone and what it just did was ridiculous. Um, it's, I've never I've never seen a a brush actually explode that hard. Now, granted, I used a little bit too much water, but that was impressive. That was really impressive. So, okay, there's my alum. It's applied. You can see the weeper is no more. I'm just going to go over it one more time just to be sure. I'm also not getting any feedback really, so I didn't overshave and I'm not feeling any hair. I'm actually actually feeling for scratchiness of hair. So I got I got pretty close. I don't know if I got a BBS, but I got I got pretty darn close there. Okay? Dry off my Allen block. A lot of people say rinse it. I don't like rinsing it because it just wastes more salt and I'm the only one that uses it, so if there's any type of blood on it, I don't care. I really don't. So, anyway, I'm not going to bring you through my entire cleanup process or anything like that. I'll leave the alum on for about you know, another 30 seconds just to make sure the, the, the sweeper stops itself. Um, very smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. I'm going to finish off this shave with Fine Accruements, uh, the old bottle of um, Fine. It is uh, the fresh vetiver, which actually has a little bit of a citrus note to it as well that matches very well with the Barrister and Man. Uh, Santal, uh, vetiver Santal. So, anyway, a recap real quick. Lord Randall mixed hair. <laughs> Basically just this thing's exploding lather everywhere. Um, vetiver Santal by Barrister and Man. Dovo Laforme. Shoulderless 6 eighths straight razor. And uh, my aftershave of the day is just going to be some fine fresh vetiver. Simple first shave of the new year. Happy New Year's everyone. I hope you enjoyed and again Stallion this one's for you okay. Take it easy everyone and uh, just a little bit of proof. The mustache remains intact. It didn't go anywhere. Enjoy your days everyone. I hope everyone's feeling okay from last night and didn't overindulge. God bless. Talk to you soon. Aaron Schechter from the Wet Shaver Review. Take it easy. Bye-bye.